recording. And I'm going to try to see now how I can. Uh, oh. And I got to record. No, that's all I got to record. So give me just a moment here. And. Uh, okay. I'm going to try this in full screen. And hopefully I'll find out when anybody else is uh, is going to join. <clears throat> so welcome <clears throat> all of you guys. Uh, I've had some friends who are normally with us let me know they can't be here today because of Independence Day <clears throat> family celebration. So uh, Stacy and Gwen aren't here. They're celebrating their daughter's birthday, which is today. Uh, and uh, I also want to uh, um, encourage you guys to watch our podcast. Uh, there, uh, it's called Grace to All with Paul Gray. Some of you have been my guest on that. And uh, you, you can find all of those at the website, gracewithpaulgray.com. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, this, this last week, I, I interviewed uh, Boyd Purcell, Dr. Boyd Purcell, uh, who's been a, a grace guy for a long time. And he uh, he's written some great books, some really good books. Uh, <clears throat> so you can check him out, Dr. Boyd Purcell. And let's see. Um, oh, yeah, I, I, I uh, got to interview Baxter Kruger. Uh, <clears throat> and I, I posted that this week, uh, uh, an hour long interview with him. Uh, that uh, uh, any of you watched that this week? Any of you see it? Yeah, some of yes, you did. I did. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he's <laughs> he's really good. And so uh, that you, I encourage you to uh, <clears throat> to watch that. And all right, Bob's getting back in here. OK. Um, all right. Well, earlier in a in an email this week, uh, I I uh, gave you all a, a seven course uh, French uh, uh, dinner uh, to look at some different things. Uh, some of the folks who aren't on here, and maybe some of you all, uh, read all of those and went through all of those and, and said you had a uh, <clears throat> delightful spiritual culinary experience. Uh, and this morning, I'm going to add uh, another uh, course to that, sort of like an after uh, course. And uh, I've got, I'm going to have a couple of intentional times of discussion <clears throat> this morning, uh, but feel free uh, anytime as we go, as usual, just to raise your hand, let me know that uh, you want to say something. Uh, you'll have to be, uh, I'll have to be able to see you online <laughs> if you're going to raise your hand and want me to say something, but uh, feel free to do that. And, uh, and we'll, uh, I'll answer any of your questions that you might have. All right. Um, you guys can uh, see my beautiful wife, Kitsy, on here. Uh, you can't see my beautiful daughter, Jody, because uh, she's uh, incognito this morning, but she's listening. Both of them are just excellent cooks. That, I mean, they. I have to uh, do all kinds of other uh, gymnastics to not gain a ton of weight every day. They're just both great cooks. Uh, Jody had a birthday last week and she marinated and fixed some wonderful steaks for us. Uh, they were good. Uh, they, they both have just a number of, of great recipes and I'm really blessed by them. And one of Kitsy's is a roast that's crock potted with uh, potatoes and vegetables. It, it, it's sort of like a stew. It, it's just, a, it's a great stew. I also fixed stew a couple of times. <clears throat> Didn't turn out quite as well. Uh, when I was sophomore in college, I moved into an apartment with three other guys who were all a couple of years older than me. And they had this apartment thing down. You would, uh, <clears throat> you would cook for a week. Then you would clean uh, for a week. Then you would <clears throat> buy groceries for a week. And then you'd be off for a week. Well, they started me out in a rotation being off for a week so I could sort of see the routine. And then uh, then I cleaned for a week. Uh, wasn't too good at that either. <clears throat> then the guy who was cooking told me what groceries to get. And my dad and mom worked in a grocery store, so I, I knew how to find the groceries so I could do that. All right. Then it came my turn to cook. 
Uh, the first meal that I cooked was, uh, we, we had a rule, no frozen food except for pizza. So I started out the first day with frozen pizza. <laughs> I had, I'd never cooked anything before. I had no clue that you had to take it out of the box. So I set the stove on fire. Uh, <clears throat> true story. They were not impressed. The second meal that I cooked was called rattlesnake stew. And different people have different names for it. I didn't actually put rattlesnake in it, but it, the concept was you could put anything you wanted into it. <clears throat> Sometime, well, I think the first time I cooked it, it was not very good. I, I, I got a little better at it. But at any rate, uh, today I, I'm going to talk about another stew <clears throat> that I'm going to add this to my, uh, uh, my French culinary experience. It also has a French word in it. Uh, I, I'm going to, I'm calling this uh, self served portions of rotten roux r-o-u-x stew and if i can share my screen here i'm going to uh i'm going to show you a little something that will give you an idea of it Let's see if i can do this here we go all right hopefully you can see this Re religion's roux of rotten rattlesnake stew and this comes from 2 Kings 4, 38 to 41. I'm not going to give you the backstory for this, but uh, Elijah returned to Gilgal. There was a famine in the land. Now the sons of the prophets were sitting before him. And he said to his servant, put on the large pot and boil stew for the sons of the prophets. So one went out in the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine and gathered from it a lap full of wild gourds and came and sliced them into the pot of stew, though they didn't know what they were. That was kind of like the first time I made rattlesnake stew. I, I just put stuff in there and I wasn't even sure what it was. Then they served it for the men to eat. Now it happened as they were eating the stew that they cried out and said, man of God, there's death in the pot. <laughs> And they could not eat it. All right. So that's a, a little uh, spiritual backstory of, of what I'm going to uh, talk about today. <clears throat> now, we all have, I've observed, regular self-served portions of rotten stew. It's poisonous. It makes us and others sick. So today we're going to talk about the cause of that and the remedy for the poison rotten stew. You guys all know the, the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Regularly consuming poison stew is insanity. But I got good news for you. I know the remedy. I know the antidote. Most of us don't even know that we're consuming poisonous stew. We don't know what we don't know. <clears throat> now, here's what it is. When something happens in your life that's not good, you can tend to stew over it. My daughter and I and my wife, Kitsy, we're Kansas, uh, Kansas City Royals baseball fans. Well, they recently had a nine-game losing streak. In the last one of those games, they lost 15 to one. Well, if you're really into baseball, you can see that happen to your team or similar things to other teams. And you can just stew in that. It'll take you, it'll take you right down the tubes and you can go into a funk. Or things like your child or your grandchild or a friend makes poor decisions that hurts them, or somebody else makes poor decisions that hurts your loved one. Or maybe you just don't get a good parking place or when service is slow at a restaurant or when the weather doesn't cooperate with your plans or when you get a bad report from the doctor or when somebody offends you and gossips about you and betrays you and hurts you and leaves you or when you just have aches and pains or when somebody won't forgive you and they keep up bringing the past. I gave you a wide range there, some just little things like not getting a parking place to some other things. But whenever those things come up, they can cause us mentally and emotionally just to go into a funk. 
but we have choices. You can make poisonous stew out of your thoughts. You can take those thoughts and dwell on them, and a poisonous dis-ease of morose will set in. And as my mom used to say, she just felt blue. You'd be in a funk. Well, the Bible talks about that. In Hebrews 12, 15, whoever wrote Hebrews, a lot of people think it was the Apostle Paul. Some people think it was the, uh, uh, it was, uh, I can't think of her name now, the lady uh, at the well, Votini, <clears throat> who we don't know. But in 12, 15, the author says, watch over each other to make sure that no one misses the revelation of God's grace. And that's what we do here on Sunday mornings together. And when others of us get together at different times, we watch over each other to see that no one misses the revelation of God's grace. And it goes on to say, make sure no one lives with a root of bitterness or resentment or rancor, rancor or hatred sprouting within them, which will only cause trouble and bitter torment and poison the hearts of many who will become contaminated and defiled by it. Well, that's pretty graphic. See, when we miss grace, it's like making rattlesnake stew with, stew with rotten meat and poisonous mushrooms and pouring in some spoiled milk. And uh, there's a French word for that. Roux, R-O-U-X. And uh, roux is just the mixture of the things that you put together. It can be for other things, but it can particularly be for uh, a stew. It's a, a French word. It's also, in our country, it's very much used by Cajuns. Uh, roux, R-O-U-X. So when we stew in that, worse than that, we can talk negatively about that situation and just sort of stew that rue not only in our own mind but out loud and when we do every time we hear our own voice it's like adding another piece of rotten meat or poison mushrooms or a little arsenic to our emotional stew and that rue mixed together just get makes it worse and worse and we stew over it we stew over our rotten rattlesnake Rue of stew, and it just sucks the energy out of you. It drains your joy. It physically affects you. And every time I found you stew over your own stew out loud to someone else, you not only steal and drain your own joy, but like Hebrews 12, 15 says, you, you mess them up too. A bitter torment poison the hearts of many people, and they'll become contaminated and defiled by it. We, we, we become a joy sucker, a purveyor of sickening, rotten, rue, rattlesnake, rattlesnake stew. <laughs> and we just, we, I can't say that really well, can I? You try it. Uh, a purveyor of uh, <laughs> sickening, rotten, rue of rattlesnake stew. <laughs> I'm going to add another R to that pretty soon. And when we do that, we miss the revelation of God's grace. And we make this rotten stew with the root of bitterness and resentment and anger and hatred. It sprouts within us. It causes trouble, bitter torment, poisons the hearts of people. And that's no good, obviously. One of the things that Kitsy is helping me with, she helps me with a lot of things. Sometimes years later, I'll finally start to uh, uh, put them to use. But one of the things she's been helping me recently is not saying negative things about other people's mistakes. I, I found that I do that sometimes to get a laugh from other people, but the result is it makes that other person look bad. And without me even knowing it, it actually sucks the joy out of me. I, I'll, I'll just kind of feel bad after I do it. And everybody else who's listening, like attracts like, the, the joy of attraction. Joy suckers attract joy suckers, I've found. All right. JL, who's with us today, often says words have power. And you all knew that. Words have power. One of my good friends, Malcolm Smith, tells a story about a long time ago, 
he moved from, he's originally from London. Then he came to the States and lived in New York City in Brooklyn. And then uh, some years, 30, 40 years ago, he moved to Texas, to Bandera, Texas, about 30 miles outside of San Antonio. And he has a ranch there and a retreat center. And, and uh, he, he teaches from there and stuff. Well, this was the first time he lived in any place where he had quite a bit of space on his ranch. So he decided to have a garden. And he actually had, he did this intentionally. He had two different plots for his garden. One of them, he did this intentionally. He went to every day and he spoke to the plants. And he says, oh, you guys are wonderful. You're growing perfectly. You're going you're gonna to produce wonderful things. And they did. And intentionally, he went to that other plot of land out of hearing distance from the first one. And he just talked angrily and nasty to him. And he put him down. And he said, you're, you're no good. You're never going to grow anything. And he said, the one that he praised and talked positively to grew and flourished. And the other withered and died. Same land, same stuff that he sprouted, same watering and everything. And he, he said he felt so bad in the process of doing that experiment that he decided never to do it again. So like me, he now talks about those things as things, ways not to live <laughs> when, he, when he does his teaching. So when bad things happen, when negative circumstances and situations come up, do we just stick our heads in the sand and ignore reality? Well, that's not a good plan. I'm going to give you some great practical advice that's not just theory. It works for me and for many other people. Now, <clears throat> I can't read my own writing there, sorry. <clears throat> Here's, here's, what, here's what happens when we experience something like that. We want to immediately go to the spirit of truth in us and ask, what is the reality here? What's going on? Holy Spirit of truth, what do you want me to think and know and say and do with this rotten rattlesnake rue? stew that i'm experiencing <clears throat> did you know that in the hebrew language of the, of the old testament jewish scriptures written in there is no word for obey the word that we incorrectly translate into english as obey is shema s-h-e-m-a it simply means to hear that's what it means to hear there's no hebrew word for obey it means to hear and when we hear from the Holy Spirit, then we have the ability, Holy Spirit power, the ninth fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, we have the ability to respond. Responsibility. That's what responsibility is. The ability to respond. And we can respond in the power of the Holy Spirit or not respond at all or try to respond in our own power. Only one of those is good. We have a choice. We can ignore the spirit of truth and wallow in the slop of the rotten rattlesnake rue stew or have another helping of it and stew in it, or we can choose wisely. We're able to put the situation and circumstances in divine perspective, listen to the Holy Spirit of truth. The pure light of Christ will expose the darkness and reveal the truth, which sets us free. So I want to take just a little bit of time here to, to discuss that. And what's been your experience with things like that? When, when you <clears throat> felt like you were just going down the tubes and you were in the funk, uh, have you had experiences where you've stopped and asked the Holy Spirit to help you and then responded and it's been helpful? Kitsy? Oh, you're... <laughs> Your that was actually up. Roger, but I was thinking of some things, uh, and I have, I can't tell you specifics, but my experience has been, if, uh, if I'm in that funk uh, and thinking about things that are bringing me down, and if I remember to ask the Holy Spirit, wait a minute, you know, what's going on here, or just saying, no, I'm not going to think about that, it, it really does help me 
to change my attitude. And I can't remember exactly uh, uh, your what you were saying or how you were saying it, Paul, but it was right before you asked the question. And I think you were saying, uh, speak something. But I always think of, of this as speaking life. Um, we don't, we want to speak mm. life over people. We want to speak life over ourselves. We want to speak life over the plants, you know, all that kind of thing. Anything else is not helpful in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Stan. Yeah. I was thinking, you know, that there've been times of, uh, potential conflict and great pressure to react in situations, especially when you're being accused of something. And one thing the Holy Spirit just gave me the impetus to do was to not say anything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I thought afterwards, that's really what Jesus did in a lot of cases. People were accusing him of, of various things and it said that he didn't utter a word, you know. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. there put sometimes, you know, pressure in our souls to want to react. But if we, you know, are attentive and to the spirit, um, you don't have to say anything and it, and it can diffuse the situation entirely. But the, the, the greatest benefit is that it doesn't stir up that, you know, that root of bitterness and other mm -hmm. that toxic brew like you were describing within us. Yeah. Amen. yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. All Yes. Jez, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Hi. Uh, I uh, not to disagree with Stanley, but I think there there is a cause in that circumstance of funk and blueness to speak the name of Jesus. And uh, I heard the lyrics from uh, uh, a Phil Wickham song "At Your Name," and I I was reminded that. Uh, in real crisis points in my life, it was the name of Jesus that turned turned the corner, if you will, or, uh, or, and set me in the place I needed to be in, in my heart. And that's 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 where the problem is trying to enter is the heart. So uh, yeah, I was reading here. It says, "At your name, the mountains shake and crumble. At your name, the oceans roar and tumble." At your name, angels will bow, the earth will rejoice, your people cry out. So it's a worship song, but the the truth remains that, that at his, in his name, at his name, at our recalling his name or speaking, we're basically speaking his name, the situation comes into clear relief and his lordship sets sets the boundaries of the things that seek to to enter our heart in some way in some negative way yeah i, I would agree with that jeff i, I want to add just a, a caveat if i may um knowing the real jesus is what makes the difference when we speak his name because we've all been especially those of us who well who, any kind of career out in the world whatever it is like in my case with as being a musician or being in the army or some of you in the trades or different things, you hear people use the name of Jesus a lot, <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, I don't think they know what it means. <laughs> mm -hmm. So just saying the name of Jesus, uh, mm -hmm. at least in my experience, uh, it, it, it's not a magic word. When we know who Jesus is, the real Jesus, then of course, it makes all the difference in the world. Well, uh, I wouldn't, sp I'm not speaking outside the household of faith. And I suppose I should, I could qualify my remarks with that, but it's assumed in the church. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, it's and part I, of, it's I, part I, of my... I, I see you're wanting to be inclusive by gathering it all in. And you're right. It is so powerless if you know yeah. not the power of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're right. I, I, I'm speaking to the choir here, so I, I probably didn't need to say that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Kitsy. Well, I wanted to uh, uh, say something about what Stan said as well. Mm -hmm. He said, use the word um, react, and you, if we don't react to whatever. There is a huge difference in reacting and responding. 
in my opinion, reacting, you just do it. You just say it, or I just do it. I just say it. With responding, I kind of take that step back and think about it first. And then hopefully I'm saying, Jesus, you answer this or whatever. Uh, so it gives you that, that pause. So you can take that deep breath and you can, um, uh, you know, look at, uh, look at the situation in a better light. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Thank, thank God for the pause, huh? Yeah. Thank God for the pause. You know, and, and really, if you think about it, if we hold in our consciousness, our place, if you will, in the kingdom and the, and the king of the kingdom and realize like, like if I, I don't want to use the master slave or servant and master, that's the better analogy, servant and master, we serve at his pleasure. Why would we speak first, no matter what the what the affront or offense? You know, we would what, look to the master first. Now, I, I'm, this is just all <laughs> supposition here, but 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 we know we have that we would want to do that ideally. We don't always do the ideal thing, but to yeah. to that pause gives us gives us the place. I, I should say, gives God His rightful place to mm. put the word in us we need mm. for that moment. Yeah, that's good. It's good. I want to share my screen uh, here again. And um, I, I'm going to show you some tried and true practical applications. Uh, as soon as things come up, like uh, we've been talking about. So let's see if I can uh, get this here. All right. I didn't come up with these. Uh, I, I've modified it some, but I got this originally from uh, Steve McVeigh, but I, I've heard other people say it using uh, different words. Steve is into uh, <clears throat> alliteration using the same uh, letter to start a bunch of things. So for me, what, what I've learned to do whenever, <clears throat> uh, now again, I don't, I don't do this all the time. I want to do it all the time, but just stop. Don't say anything as uh, one of you suggested and realize that I'm thinking and speaking darkness, which is another word for negativity. And then recognize that that's going to harm me. It's going to harm me if I keep on doing it and then reject it. The, the word that's mistranslated, repent, which means change your mind, change my way of thinking, replace it with what the spirit of truth shows you. And then renew my mind, go back to my, you, you can't, RE means to go back to what it was before. Change your mind to what it was originally in our original Genesis, the mind of Christ, renew our mind. Then rejoice and repeat yeah. as often as necessary. <laughs> uh, I, I put that in the, uh, in the scripture handout that uh, I emailed to you all yesterday. So if you want to, uh, you can go to that and cut and paste and print it out. <clears throat> um, or uh, you can ask me and I'll email you this one uh, thing here uh, separately. But uh, just... You know, there's going to be uh, the religious term that I grew up with is there's a check in your spirit. We can say that or whatever. If we pay attention to that, the Holy Spirit is is as uh, he or she always does gently getting our attention. And when we learn to hear the spirit's voice, we will go, oh, I, I, I realize what, I, what I'm thinking and speaking is not good recognize that that could harm me if I say something bad or continue down this way of thinking, reject it, change my mind about it, replace it with what the spirit shows me. Uh, and next week, we're going to talk about what to replace it with and then renew my mind, which means to take the mind of Christ then rejoice and repeat as often as is necessary. Now that, that, that does help me very much. Um, and, I, it, it will help you too as well. We're going we're gonna to go into that just a little bit more and then we'll spend the rest of our time discussing. <clears throat> so um, 
negative circumstances and situations are going to happen. I mean, you know, that's part of life. Jesus told us that. He said, you know, you, you got to understand this. In this life, you're going to have trouble. But when the trouble comes, he said, don't take the trouble. Take joy. And next week, I'm going to talk about where do we take that joy from? Most of you probably already know. But we have the ability, uh, as, as Kitchen mentioned earlier, to respond. We have the ability to avoid sources that perpetuate rotten rattlesnake roux stew. And I mean, you, you don't keep going back to a restaurant where you get food poisoning. I mean, <laughs> so. Somebody, was somebody saying something? I, I can't see you. I think that's Devel in the background. Uh, okay. All right. Um, so for me, it's become helpful to know what sources of negative negativity will put me into a cauldron of richest brew, witches brew and rotten rattlesnake brew stew. What are the sources? What are the places that I hear words that cause worry and fear and angst and doubt and unrest and morose? I'm going to give you some that I've identified for me. They may not be for you, but they might. The first source is the news. I grew up a news junkie. I learned how to read, reading the Kansas City Star and the Kansas City Times. And I continued reading our local paper through all day long and watching news, uh, political news. I was getting regular doses of rotten stew from the news. Sometimes for me, it was like going to a buffet in a restaurant, this long line of food and just eating it all, but realizing it was all rotten and poisonous. And I didn't know what it was that was making me sick while I was eating it, both spiritually and physically. And I would worry about it and I would stew and I'd get anxious and stuff. I'm not saying anybody else should do this, but I stopped cold turkey. Now I've stopped before and going back to it, but <clears throat> this time I hope I'm going to stay there. I, I still read the local news. I try not to pay any attention to the national news because it just takes me down this tube. Now, I, I don't want to be naive and not know what's going on, but I certainly don't want to think about it or stew over it. So the news is one. Second one is negative people. Second source of the rotten stews is negative people. Now, we all have negative people in our life. We love them. We want to love them, but we can set boundaries and we can speak truth love, as we talked about last week, ask them not to be that way. And if necessary, we can just remove ourselves from the situation uh, and, and not spend time with them, limit our time with them. Now, <clears throat> I, I want to give you a little example of that. This week, and for those of you who are in the Lawrence area, this coming Thursday, I'm going to play a concert with, uh, with my old band at noon downtown outdoors in downtown Lawrence. Call it a brown bag concert. I, I've been doing that, I think, for 45 years. And uh, we're going to do that this Thursday. And a friend of mine, where I don't have a regular band that I play with anymore. So a friend of mine uh, and I are working on this together. And we were putting together the list of songs we wanted to do and the list of the other people we wanted to include in the band. And, you know, we wanted to pick the best person available on any given instrument. You know, one of them is going to be the Dean of Music at KU, who's a great jazz clarinet and saxophone player. But there was another particular instrument that we needed, and I'm gonna, not going to tell you what it is, but we needed uh, that particular instrument, somebody to play it. And one that I came to mind to, probably the best person on that instrument in our area, both my friend and I agreed, no, we don't want to have him because he, he's so negative and such a downer, even when we're playing happy music, it doesn't feel happy. Reminds me of a quote, of a quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson. He said, it's a happy talent to know how to play to play well with others, not just music or anything else. So we lined up somebody else to play who may not be quite as good a musician, but is fun to be with. So negative people. Now, here's the worst. 
in my opinion. And I hope you agree, <laughs> as the Apostle Paul said. And if you don't, God will make that clear to you, too. <laughs> so, no, here, here, here's the worst, in, in my opinion. It's religion. That's where we can hear some of the sickest, most rotten, poisonous things that we, they, religion is a purveyor of rotten rattlesnake brew stew. Here are, here are some things that I used to purvey and that you can hear in religious settings. You're no good. God can't stand to be around you. God can't even stand to look at you. You can never please God. You were born to stick despicable and totally prayed. Just this last week on a, on a national radio show, I won't mention which one, but Kitsy told me about it. The, the host of that show, who's a, a great guy and fun to listen to, but he happened to mention on that show that whenever he looks in the mirror, he feels so sad because all he sees is brokenness. See, religion says you're broken. Jesus says you're whole. <laughs> you're not broken. You're whole. Religion says the same thing that I just mentioned about everybody else, that God's continually angry, full of wrath, watching you like a hawk, keeping a list of your foul ups. There's hell to pay. And God has been continually torturing your past relatives, and hell is going to do the same thing with many of your current relatives. Now, just hearing what I said there for about 45 seconds has made some of us sick to our stomach. And I'm learning not to talk about that at all, except for just a few things like this as, as warnings of what not to do. That's why millions of people have left organized religion and more are leaving every day. Because the things we hear make us sick. And sometimes we don't even realize what it is. Earlier this week, I, I sent you all the Passion Translation version of John chapter 9 and verses 10, 1 to 10. Jesus did a wonderful thing there. He healed a man's sight who had been blind from birth. He restored his sight. Actually, he never had sight, so it's not like he restored it, but he restored it to what God wants us to have. He, re, he, he gave this man sight. He, you know, he was a grown man. I think it was 30, 40 years that he'd been blind. And the guy rejoiced at that. Jesus was ecstatic. Everybody was euphoric. Everybody around was full of joy. The man's parents were overjoyed. But if you, read, if you read that passage, John chapter 9 up until John chapter 10, verse 10, you see that the religious leaders came to steal and kill and destroy that joy. Jesus said, no, the thief, religion has come to steal and kill and destroy. Not me. I've come to give you life to the full. Abundant life has no room for rotten stew. There's a whole other way of being, of living and, and, and not being emotionally and physically sick every day. You can be set free from all of that. The opposite, the opposite of sickness and wholeness is health and life and joy. So how do we get that? We do just what we've been talking about today. We immediately go to the Holy Spirit and say, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not feeling good. I just heard something that doesn't set well with my spirit that's you know, something that's rotten. The Holy Spirit, show me what that is. And the Holy Spirit will. Realize that we're thinking and speaking darkness, another word for negativity. Recognize it's harming me. Repent, change our mind, our way of thinking. Replace it with what the spirit of truth is showing us. Renew our minds. Go back to our original Genesis, the mind of Christ. Rejoice and repeat as often as necessary. So, I've repeated some things a few times today on, on purpose because I need to hear them. I, I struggle with these things that I've talked about. Uh, and again, Kitsy's really helping me like with this. The Holy Spirit's helping me more than anything. But uh, all right, we're going to, it's a, you guys' time to talk. So, Jeff. <coughs> you, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Just, uh, I got my first lesson in filleting catfish uh, a week ago. And uh, I've never liked catfish for the strong flavor you can get with the fillets. But if you know how to do it correctly, you cut out the red streak 
of the filet. That's the strong taste of the catfish. And it reminded me of what you were saying about religion. You know, religion is, has that strong, unpleasant taste to it, but it's in something that otherwise is a, is a great taste and, mm -hmm. and, is, and is delicious. Yeah. That good is good. Analogy. It's very, very good. good. Yeah. 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 Stanley's nodding at his approval. <laughs> yeah. And Mike's going to chime in. Go ahead, Mike. Well, first of all, uh, is there any way you can get me back? I, I've lost my video. It, can you get me back on or not? Um, you, you should have a thing that uh, is a picture of a, of a movie camera. Uh, no, I don't see it. The, anyway, uh, that, yeah. That's all right. I don't need to be on. I can, I, I, I'm hearing everything okay. So what I was going to share was that uh, um, this, you're, you're sharing something that I've been learning this week as well. And um, uh, this other is not really from, say, a spiritual source, but I, I think it's spiritual anyway. Uh, I've been, normally my whole life, I've been pretty positive. But lately, my body has been uh, kind of falling apart, and I hurt, and and so on. I've been complaining, and um, and uh, so somebody somebody turned me on to uh, Toby Keith, and he wrote a song that he got the idea from Clint Eastwood. They were playing golf. Clint Eastwood's eighty-eight, and and. Uh, and he asked Clint what, what he was going to be doing. He said, I'm going to start, start a new movie next week. And, and Toby says, what keeps you going? And he said, well, when I get up in the morning, I don't let the old man in. And so Toby Keith wrote a song about that. And, and, uh, but that really struck me. I don't let the old man in, and, uh, which is what I'd been doing. And, and uh, actually, I went out and played golf on uh, Friday and uh, shot several strokes better than I had before because I didn't let the old man in. <laughs> wow, that's so, great. Did you shoot your age? Uh, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, yeah. I, I regularly shoot my age, 74, <laughs> uh, on the first two or three holes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great, Mike. Very good. But yeah, go ahead, Emery. When I think of religion, I think of someone who places rules and regulations to uh, conduct their life. And in those rules and regulations, how well they keep them and do them determines how pleasing God is toward them. And as I talked with you earlier in the week, I come out of a court and we were very legalistic. And we had to do the do's and don'ts. And in doing that, that poisoned me. That really added to that bitter rattlesnake stew that you've been talking about. And I was always worried that I never was good enough. I wasn't pleasing God. So therefore, there was a good chance that I was not going to be able to be with him, that I was going to end up burning in hell fire. And until I come to understand that life began in me understanding the trinity and understanding what you have been talking about the perichoresis of the trinity how god wanted to include humanity in the union and communion that christ shares with the father through the spirit until i come to understand that i did not begin to understand freedom Yeah. It's for freedom we've been set free. Yeah. Go ahead, Stan. Stan is his uh, voice is off. Stan, you're still muted. 
can't see. There you go. Okay. All right. All right. Um, you know, I was thinking one way of uh, identifying the source of what our thoughts and our words are. Uh, a good barometer is found in James chapter three, I believe it is. And it talks about the wisdom that is from below. And it lists that list, which I want to go into. But it says, going on, it says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. You know, and the context of that is, is our words, our tongue. You know, so, you know, we can identify based on this, just what is the source? What is it we are hearing? What is it we are listening to? What is it we are speaking? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we can know what the source is. Yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, Stan and uh, uh, Mike were uh, both in uh, my course, Pure Light Walker. And, uh, you know, that what you, what you just mentioned from James chapter three, uh, what comes from above is pure and pure light with no trace of darkness. So anytime we start to, anytime we hear something that has a little bit of darkness in it, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, as Jeff said in the catfish, that, that, you know, you got this big play here, but you got that little uh, line of, of red stuff in there. Anytime you hear just one little thing like that, uh, we, we need to be aware, obviously, that that affects the whole stew. And, uh, uh, and, and realize that, be aware of it, and, and reject it. And yeah, thank you for that scripture, Stan. That's uh, yeah, that's really appropriate. Who else who who hadn't uh, said much this morning? Bill, welcome. We're glad to have you here. You joined us a little late, but it's good to see you. I'm glad to be here. That's, that's the reason I tune in is to hear the positive things. <laughs> Cause like you say, there's plenty of negative out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. so, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm dealing a little bit with some things here at the house and stuff. So uh, I was at another meeting this morning that started at 10 o'clock and tried to make a, a run afterwards to get here in time to, to do it. But uh, like most things, I'm a half a day <laughs> short. And, and everything so but I really do uh, like to say how much I appreciate the the people that we have here and the upbeat and the, and the positive attitude I know we talk about there is things that can pull us down and but he is always pointing us towards the cross and in the cross we find our happiness because in the resurrection we find ourselves in him and it is all positive yay and amen so and yeah. I, I miss it when I don't get a chance to sh listen to you all talk. And uh, so uh, you're very precious to me. I love you as brothers and sisters in the Lord. And, you as uh, well. You're really, you're really fortunate that I don't uh, talk more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're glad to have you here. Yeah. We're glad I to have you here. Everybody says as well. Yeah. Especially Today, time. Uh, yeah, today, today, of course, is the 4th of July, and, and in many places, uh, it's, it's really hot. The weather's really hot. Uh, however, I, I just realized today that hell froze over. I mean, <laughs> Bob, Bob Engel hadn't said a word this morning, so hell yeah. must have frozen over. <laughs> Now I've, now I've offended him even more and he ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> All right. Dana, how about you? Anything I'm you want to work, add? I'm a work in progress. And I think more than anything, it's just being conscious. I, I do think I'm always losing my cell phone. So it makes me realize, you know, I, I just act subconsciously on, on so many things, but especially the cell phone. And I can't remember where I put it. So I have to have a home phone so I can call my cell phone. <laughs> and it's just like, I'm unconscious about a lot of things, you know? <laughs> I don't think about, you know, what I do. 
And so I'm a work in progress and I know I'm dependent on the Lord and the spirit, uh, father, son, and spirit, the Trinity, Trinity. <laughs> it's hard now to kind of, when you're talking about God, you want to say they, because, you know, you kind of start realizing they're one, but they're not, you know, they're separate too. So, um, but it's, it's such an interesting thing that I'm going through and I like it and I don't want to stop. So <laughs> I'm working, you know, one day at a time on, um, you know, this journey to uh, be more sensitive to God. I loved it when um, you said, um, now my brain, Kitsy, okay, I got you. I, I couldn't see it. Um, when you said that when you were doing, working in the garden and how mm -hmm. your, your heart was just so in tune with speaking with God. And I thought, now I've had times like that, but not in a while. And where it was just um, like that song, when you go to the garden and the dew is on the, well, I can't remember it now, but anyway, I just, we need th that. It's everything. It's our mm -hmm. life, you know, to, to be close to the, our creator, our source. Mm -hmm. and, and I do love the word um, Jesus because I really, um, that does kind of ground you to the reality of who we, who we are actually, and to who he has shown us that we are. And that's new to me in a way too, because, but I don't have to pray in Jesus name, like it's magic. <laughs> it, yeah. it's just, his name is, if you, like you say, have it in the right context. Yeah, it's it's powerful. It mm -hmm. is very much. Is yeah, thank you, Stan. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I was going to say, you know, just in response to what she says, sometimes we may see ourselves as a work in progress, but he sees us as complete. Amen. You're right. mm -hmm. Indeed, yeah. he did. And, he does indeed. Yeah, amen. I uh, sometimes, many times, we change the words to old songs uh, uh, in in our praise and worship when we do it live. And uh, I want to give you just a little example there because because it just happened. And it's a song that I grew up here in, in the church that uh, that I grew up in. Uh, we sang it. I, I, I've got the choir in mind as I hear it. The choir was seven or eight people much older than I am right now who were mostly deaf and couldn't sing to begin with. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a pleasant uh, musical experience, but I remember the song <laughs> and the, uh, I, I'm partially deaf myself, so I can relate. But the song, the first line of that is, I come to the garden alone. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with We're that? Not You're not We're alone. not alone. We're never alone. <laughs> it's yeah. like we, we go somewhere and then Jesus comes and joins us. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> he, he's he's in us before we go out to the garden when we're at the garden and when we when we leave the garden so uh, again I that's it. <laughs> yeah there's old old hymn that says no never alone mm. yeah. yeah 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 and and it, you know jesus says uh, it, it's somewhere around well i i think it's in john 16 i'm not sure uh he said uh where I'm going, you can't come with me, um, but I won't be alone because my father is always with me. I, I'm not quoting that exactly. Uh, his father is always with him. Of course, some of us have been taught that when he went to the cross, he was alone and the father was up here. And No, he, we're, we're never alone. Jesus was never alone. The father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinity have never been uh, separated. They've always been one. We have always been one with them. And what we're doing here right now is reminding each other of that and encouraging each other so, so that we know, no, you, you can't be alone. He's, he's always there. One of the things that uh, he, he's done with me before, and again, recently, just in the last few days, is my mind will, uh, it, it just goes weird places. 
And I'll go back to something 50 years ago that I was involved in or doing or whatever. And the Lord will just gently say to me, Paul, I was there with you. I was in you when that happened. Now, don't, don't beat yourself up over that. I don't even remember it except to remind you that I was there. You know, I've worked it all out for the good. Don't, don't put that in your pot of stew and ruminate <laughs> over it. Um, and it's so wonderful when he does that. Lenny, I want to give you a chance to, uh, if you want to, to, to say anything. I appreciate you listening. Go ahead. Just a second. Somebody's knocking on my. Go ahead. Yeah. We'll no problem. Still on. Oh. Okay. Um, I was just going to say, I almost had a chance this week to do, to say some things that were not very nice about some people. And right as I was about to type some things on Facebook, I was like, nope, not going to do it. I'm not even <laughs> going to go there. For one thing, that's wrong to do that, say stuff about people behind their back. I don't want to be a gossip or a rumor monger. And I was like, that is so negative. That's not what the love of God's about. Yeah. Let, let, let's always return uh, return to correcting our course. If we go off on a tangent, let's bring it back around to God's uh, love again. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And when I look at it in God's love, I'm like, okay, now I know what the right thing to do and not to do is. So yeah. I'm going to stick with God's love and stay on course with that. Oh, you're, you're exactly right. I, I'm so glad you waited till now to say that. If, if you'd have said that in the beginning, I wouldn't have had anything to talk about for an hour. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, Mike. Uh, many years ago, when I first uh, uh, I began to understand grace, as opposed to legalism that I was um, uh, very deep, deep in, um, I and I began to understand that God was in me all the time and he never left. And uh, so I would get up in the morning and I would say, okay, Papa, where are we going? What are we doing today? <laughs> and um, and I, I think I need to get back to doing that again. I haven't uh, mm. done that in a long time. Although that's my intent is always, you know, in the back of my mind, but that was, it was, it was awesome for me, especially after being in legalism so long, and in bondage and to be free and then to just be able to say, hey, where are we going? What are we doing today? <laughs> yeah, that's Mike, good. It is good. And I feel the same way, Mike. And I don't know, it, it, this may not be a word for anybody but me, but I, I will, I'll hear things like you just said, and I'll think about that. And if I don't write it down, I don't think about it till weeks later when somebody else says the same thing. So I, I will take things like that. Well, like, for example, that list of things that I put up, those, uh, you know, uh, realize, recognize, and all of that. Uh, I, I have printed that off. I put it in my folder of stuff that my sort of uh, journal, my journalist journal, that uh, I journal less journal. I don't have an actual journal that, uh, and uh, I, I, I need to use, I need to look at that every day to remind myself, uh, because like you just said, Mike, I can get out of the habit of doing it. Now, some of the rest of you all may not uh, ever need to do that. Um, uh, and Kitsy and I have been watching, uh, go ahead, Kitsy. Well, I just wanted to say, Mike, I, I thought as you were saying that, I thought, oh my goodness, that would be a great thing to put on my mirror. Okay, Jesus, what are we doing today? Yeah. Okay, Okay, guys. Yeah. Hey, guys, that would be good. Okay, guys, what are we doing today? <laughs> yeah. The, what are the four of us doing today? Yeah. Yeah, Paul. Uh, Paul. yeah Jeff. Or Bill. No, uh, Bill? Yeah. That was someone else, but I do want to say something. Okay, Bill, go you ahead. go first and then Jeff. Okay, well, when, when Mike was talking, saying <laughs> Papa and love, you know, of course, I thought Jesus, you know, and but I have a, I have a storied history with the name of Jesus in song. Uh, all my Christian life, and one of the songs came to mind was "In the Name of Jesus." In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. And and when we, and another verse says, "When we go in the name of Jesus," you know, when we when we go or literally speak the name of Jesus, think the name of Jesus, we are suddenly in it. Where we, meaning our consciousness, is linked now with Him. 
you know, it's, it's a turning, if you will, yeah. or can't be like that. And it's like, oh, God's here, you know, yeah. of course he's here, but, but we, but we turn and face the truth again and are just encouraged, excited, clothed, are everything we need in the moments met. And, and we start, and that's our journey. That yeah. is, it's that beautiful name, you know, and, and it's the name for love. It's the name for everything that we associate with the goodness of God and the, and the provision he's laid in for yeah. us for our entire journey. Starting that's absolutely today. right. Absolutely. And, Thank and you. I said something to my <laughs> wife earlier, <clears throat> well, and that was someone else was coming, uh, talking about something about their journey. And uh, it, I said, uh, I said, we're on, we're on the journey, but God's already at the end. And yeah. and she, and she said, no, He's with us now. I said, well, He's both places, honey. <laughs> you know, He's He's in the and of course God is now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good. Bill, what were you going to say? You know, I, I was going to say that me and Mike's been together for a long time, and him saying starting his day out. Lord, uh, what what could we do? It's really funny. For the last week, uh, the Lord been dealing with me about something that happened when I was really young. We used to have in school what something we called a ride a day, and you got to ride with your dad on his job to see what he did and all mm -hmm. of that. And I was really really impressed when I went with my dad and I found out he just didn't go out there and then somebody gave him money and he brought it home on Friday that I actually seen that he did something that produced something. And so I, uh, like I said, the Lord was dealing with me and he, and he said, you know, you have a ride a day, Bill, every day if you want it. He said, I can take you through the scriptures and let you ride with me and see what I do. And all you get is the enjoyment of watching me perform what I do. All I want you to do is just be with me. All I want you to do is just see and, and enjoy the fact that you're part of this. You're my son and that I will take care of all of it, but you can ride with me. And so I've been thinking all week how to express the ride a day that I have with the Lord every day that I can get up and go out there. I can go with him when he fed the the, the 5,000, I can go with him when he made the blind man see, and I can see my father do those things and say, come with me, come with me, I want to show you what I am, and the thing that I liked about it the most is that when I became a father, and I could take my child out there, how pleasing it was to me for them to be able to see what I did and what I was able to do, so it's just as pleasing to the Lord when we go with him and appreciate what he does, is that us appreciating what he does for us oh that's Man. wonderful <laughs> wonderful yeah that it reminds me of john 17 3 in the uh, in the mirror uh you know, i don't i don't have it memorized but uh, you know the other versions say uh, uh this is eternal life knowing god the father and jesus uh, the mirror says um this life of the ages uh is being with God on his irresistible journey. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's his irresistible journey, riding with him all day long, uh, you know, whether we're in the garden, whether we're at work, whether we're uh, uh, in scripture, uh, whether we're here uh, encouraging each other. Uh, I mean, what, to me, uh, that's just so exciting that wherever we are, he is, and wherever he is, we are. And, uh, it uh, uh, the the I to me it's the four of us together. That's why uh, uh, you, you can see on my background the pure light walker thing, and in in the bottom uh, I don't know if it's big enough for you to see it, but I have a timestamp of eleven eleven, and uh, I I set my uh, alarm for eleven eleven because it reminds me of Papa Jesus Holy Spirit and me one 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 together is still one. And just that, that little timestamp thing is uh, it helps me remember that. Hey, we're uh, we've gone a, a little longer than uh, we normally do. But uh, anybody have any closing thing that you want to say, Dana? Go ahead. What made you uh, come up with this idea about the uh, the French meal that we were having? 
and um, we I, I did do all of it, but the very last part. And so <laughs> I just wondered, I, I mean, it was very creative, I gotta say. Uh, I just wondered what made you come up. And then the one that uh, Bob Dingle gave us about the river, the chair, the homeless place. That was a very good video. And I just wondered what, what spurred that? Well, I have a friend who uh, uh, gave me that idea. It's, it's, his name is Jesus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Stan, were you going to say something? No, no, I was just laughing too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, thank you all. Uh, I will. Uh, uh, I am recording this. Uh, it takes uh, uh, a video this long on Zoom. It takes uh, over an hour to uh, to render it, and then about that long to get it to upload. But uh, it'll be on before uh, the afternoon is on. And uh, feel free to share it uh, with other people. Uh, you know, some of you, you know, like uh, Emery uh, asked this week if he could uh, could join us. Um, uh, Lenny's done the same thing and uh, others. So I'm, I'm always glad to have more people uh, join us. So thank you guys so much. Uh, enjoy the rest of the weekend. And uh, are, are love you, you all. Love you all and happy fourth. Yeah. Thank you. Same to you. Yeah. You love guys too. You all too. See you next time. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.